All right, so in the last video, we talked about the sketch and we got the cranium, the, the rib cage, and talking about the importance of the space between the cranium and the rib cage to give you the neck. That's what you're then going to build your structures on top of. So for my little guy here, I'm going to go ahead and open up my folder. The sketch is the first thing you should post. And I'll open it up in Photoshop, my little sketch. All right, so what am I missing here? Because I sketched it really quickly. I have the cranium, but I don't have a collarbone and I don't have a rib cage, right? Instead, it's just a cranium on this kind of wedge shape with these things sticking out. And that is not all that helpful because in order for those arms to have any strength at all, they need to connect to a rib cage. So I'm going to change colors here and just show you how I would paint that. Sketch it in. So the collarbone is actually here, floating above the rib cage. Those little joints show how these little fin-like arms are attached. And then the rib cage is quite small because it has to fit within the collarbone. So my creature is pear-shaped. So the rib cage is narrower than the next structure along the spine. And his spine is going like this, or her spine. And then the big structure is that pelvis, a really wide pelvis with a joint at each side. Now, this creature is designed to have human legs in the sense that they have a, a long femur, like this, a knee joint, and then a lower leg that goes right into a foot. But if it was more like a four-legged creature, the pelvis would then have three joints before you get to where the toes are touching the ground. It would be like this, then this, then this, and then their toes, right? So as humans, we walk on all of our foot, and our foot is composed of the toes and of the arch. But most animals just walk on their toes, and the arch of our foot is what is their lower leg. And that gives them a lot more spring. Imagine if you only walked on your toes, right? And if your, the arch of your foot was a lot longer, then you have a lot more power. So if you're thinking of a kangaroo, if you're thinking of a deer, a cat, a bull, all these creatures have these kind of three joints. And so you want to understand that. You can see it on the whiteboard because that's something that's often misunderstood. You're not going to find a lot of human bending knees in the animal kingdom. All right. Next. Once we understand our sketch, then we know the angle that we're trying to find different references from. And we might have ideas about where to find these references. And where do we go? We go right to Pixabay. Pixabay will help. And again, you don't need to log in. If you don't log in, you can download the second to the largest. And if you want to log in and have higher resolution, <clears throat> we are using Photoshop, so these computers can handle it, but your home computer may not be able to. All right, so what am I looking for? Well, what I'm going to do, why I recommend you sketch on paper, is so you can just have your sketchbook there at your computer, but I'm just going to push my sketch off to the edge, and now I'm going to find some of these features. So the first one I need to worry about is the cranium, right? What do I want to get that from? And he's kind of a furry creature, so I might think of a gerbil. And then, remember, you want to scroll past this first row, because that's all stock photography. And then all of this reference is good to use. Now, what I'm looking for is a cranium at this angle. I'm not really looking for anything else. I'm looking for the skeletal structure. 
So the ears I can change, the eyes I can change, the mandible I can change, but the cranium, I want a furry cranium that goes into a rib cage at this angle. This looks pretty good, right? So I'm going to open that in a new tab. And how do we check your reference? Remember, everything from Pixabay is good quality, but make sure it's in focus. And since the head is the focal point of this photo, this will be good. So I download that. Then remember what RJ Palmer says, you got to organize. So I'm going to open up my folder, open up assignment two, and instead of just having a reference folder, I'm going to create four, four folders. This is, works for me really well. I do a lot of creature design. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. So for my head, these are some of the ones I've already grabbed. I got stuff for eyes. I got stuff for beaks. I don't have a cranium yet. So I'm going to move this in from my downloads folder into my head folder. For ears, I want to go a little bit cuter than having the bat ears, the bat wing ears. So I found this reference, right? Because ears, I can cheat the angle better than I can, because ears are dynamic. The static forms, you can't cheat. So the cranium, the, the chest, the rib cage, the pelvis, you need to find reference at the right angle. Everything else you can cheat with warping and distorting. So that's my head. Those are my head elements. My shoulders, this gets into the chest. Well, I actually found a gerbil that has a chest going in the right direction. So that can be really useful and he's really furry. And then I have stuff for the arms. I think this chameleon got put into the wrong category. That's an option for eyes. Okay, next, knees. All I have for knees is you want to think about where the pelvis is and where the joints are. That works pretty well. But I'm going to layer it with this guy because I really like these textures. And these can be nice transitions. So I'm going to give him uh, this transition from the chest into the knees. And then he's going to have duck feet, which are going to look pretty different than the children's book character. He's going to have actually these bird feet with webbing. So that's a very different kind of anatomy. But that's the little creepiness. And I think I like that better than, than these. Feet are the hardest thing to find good reference for because they're often obscured, right? They're covered up by whatever they're standing on. All right, now that I've got that, how do I continue? Well, I got to get my sketch into my computer. And once I've done that, I can upload it right to Canvas, which is smart because then you acknowledge the deadline. And now that I have it in Photoshop, I'll make little notes. So what am I using? I'm using a chicken for the pelvis. And you can always, just like with your landscape, you can change a little bit based on the reference you have, but this is going to keep you, keep you honest, right? So this is now my plan. This is the size of my creature. So just like for our landscape, I'm going to use my move tool and my rulers to draw guides around my creature. And I want that shape that contains my creature from head to toe. Nothing gets cropped off. I need it to be at least 8 by 10 inches by at least 300 pixels per inch. So what do I do now? I crop it to those guides so that I can know exactly what physical shape this is, what we call physical format. So I go to image, image size. We get better and better at this through repetition. 
And this is only four by four inches by 300. I want it to be at least eight by 10. So I can just have resample checked, put in a width of eight, and then it's eight by eight. But that's not big enough, right? It needs to be at least eight by 10. So instead, I'm gonna make it 10 inches tall. That gives me 9.8 by 10. And then because I'm using Photoshop and I'm in the lab, and because I have the processing power to be able to print it bigger if I want, I'm going to make it 350 pixels per inch, my preferred studio resolution. But the standard minimum that's required is 300 or higher. All right, that took us a digital sketch that was 4 megabytes. And I'm growing it until it's 34 megabytes. So whenever the computer has to make up information, it does a bad job. You can see it here. It's going to make it really fuzzy. But this is just my sketch. This is just my IKEA instructions. So it's okay if it's a little fuzzy. Now that it's the right size, I can double check that, especially if you're doing it in PhotoP, double check so it doesn't shift on you, that it's more than eight by 10 by at least 300 pixels per inch. Once it is, then what you're going to do is grow your canvas size. So you say image canvas size, and now I'm gonna make it the same I did for my landscape, 30 by 40 inches. But because my creature design is taller than it is wide, it's 30 on top, 40 on the bottom. But it's the same size anyway. And it filled in with black, but if I do that again and go to image, canvas size, put in 30 by 40, uncheck relative if it's checked, it shouldn't be. Growing from the center, I'm going to make the extension color gray. And now I have my desk working space where I can bring in my references. This is even more important for this assignment because I'm going to use the analogy not of making a collage like I did for the landscape. I'm going to use the analogy of building a car for the creature because like a car, it needs to go onto a functional chassis. The functional chassis is this skeletal template. All the angles need to be right. All the axles need to be in the right place. All the connections need to be right. And I'm going to build it just like a car gets built, not all in one place. I'm going to build it in sections. I'll build the head in one place. I'll build the torso and the pelvis in another place. Then I weld them all to the, ch to the chassis. So now that I've got the right space, I can start bringing in my reference. And I have it nicely organized into head, shoulders, knees, and toes. So I'm going to start with the shoulders, kind of the biggest shape. And I'm going to bring in this gerbil for the chest. And I said that it's angle of anatomy matched, right? And that's because the collarbone is actually tilted this way, just like it is in my sketch, even though the arms are very different. So I'm gonna make it smaller to fit my sketch because I know my sketch is at the right pixel dimensions and I can tilt it and I can even do little things because these are organic, like right click, and even though it's still a smart object in Photoshop, it now allows me to warp it. So I can make this gerbil that's very much just egg shaped into something that's a little bit more pear shaped. And then I'm gonna move it off to the side. I oh, didn't want that. Accidentally unnested my tools, and that's annoying. There we go. All right, so I'm going to shrink my window a little bit so I can see all my references. Then I use my move tool, and just like if it was my desk making a collage or the factory floor making a car, I'm going to move it off to another section. All right, what else do I need? Well, let's go right to the head. The head is the focal point of the creature. It's like the engine of the car. It's the thing that matters most in character design. So I'm going to bring in the cranium. Now for the cranium, I don't need the body. I just need the head. So I'm going to immediately do a rough cutout with my lasso with a lot of overlap. I think it's even just photos of the same gerbil, <laughs> but a lot of overlap. I don't know if I want the whiskers or not. And then I just hit Command-J and delete the smart object. 
then I can take that that duplicate layer, Command T to transform.